Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the shop once again. Today we're gonna to show you how to change your spark plugs in the Ford 5.0 liter Coyote engine found in the 2011 through 2017 F-150 and Mustang models. Now the procedure is actually pretty simple on this engine. It's very simple, probably the easiest ones, easiest spark plugs you ever change in your life. The spark plug part number, the gap, the torque spec, everything's the same no matter what model you're working on and no matter what year you're working on, 2011 through 2017. Let's get started. All right, now because this engine is so simple, and everything's pretty easy to get to, these tools right here is all you're gonna need to actually get the job done. So we're gonna need you know, a little quarter inch ratchet and eight mil socket on there to get the uh, bolts off the coils. We're gonna need a 5 8 spark plug socket and a couple of different length extensions on there. Swivels like this is best, and of course a 3 8 ratchet. Standard length is best for torquing down, especially if you don't have a torque wrench. We're of course gonna need some dielectric grease for the boot, and then it's always advisable, even with the coating on the new spark plugs, to put a little bit of anti-seize on the bottom threads here. Just make sure you don't glob it on there, and make sure you don't get any on the center electrode and the porcelain and the ground strap here. But that's about it. So let's go over the vehicle and get started. Now before we get started, there's a few notes on this engine. Ford now wants the engine warm when changing spark plugs, not cold like they've been saying for many, many years. And of course, never hot. So they want the engine warm now. So if it's uh, summertime and it's cold and cold engine, you just wanna start it and let it idle for maybe a minute. Whereas winter time, you wanna let it start and run for maybe two to three minutes and then we can go ahead and get started on it. You want to bring it up to right around 100 degrees or so, and that's best for pulling spark plugs out of here problem-free, okay? They're not going to get stuck. They're not going to break, but it's best for the threads and the cylinder head. Also, you want to have compressed air on hand to clean around the coils. As you can see here, uh, they are a trap for dirt, but they're not so bad on these compared to the other modular engines. Besides that, let's go ahead and turn the key off, make sure it's out of there, and we can get started. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how to change the spark plug on the easiest one to get to right here, so you can just have a nice clear view of all procedures, and then you simply repeat and repeat and repeat as you go along. Now the back two cylinders on here, you're going to need the shorter extension and a socket on there, whereas the front ones, it's best to just use something longer like this, and you can get in there, it makes it a lot easier. Let's get to it. All right, here we go. We're gonna show you the full procedure live in real time on cylinder number one, passenger front here. Uh, just for video purposes, we're using this cylinder as an example. Uh, but of course, you can start on any cylinder you want and jump around if you want and end, end on any cylinder you want. Uh, we're just using this one because it's the easiest one to film. It is best though to go in order so you don't mix anything up and forget anything going through here doing the job. So the very first thing you want to do is, of course, use the air wand to get in and clean around the coil. And then especially this connector is going to make this getting this connector separated much, much easier. All right, there is that. Next, we are going to get in here and release this red secondary locking tab for the electrical connector on the ignition coil. You probably already heard about these. These can be a real pain. They can be fragile. They can disintegrate when you touch them. They're not totally necessary. So if you do break one, don't freak out. Um, but you want to try to, of course, avoid that. So what we're going to do is use a cat claw like this and kind of work it back right there and I'll kind of stop you know it won't just fly out usually and we'll get it right about there then there's a there's a primary locking tab right here the black one we'll push down on that push in on the connector and then pull the whole thing off yeah it's it's a little complicated so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we push down on it push forward okay and then we're gonna use a cat claw or, or flat blade screwdriver like this and kind of pry it up and out of there, okay? So it unlocks. The idea here is to release that locking tab so it doesn't break. It also helps if you can kind of nudge it up right here. That's probably the best tip I can give you. 
you can kind of nudge it up, you'll feel it's released, and then you can freely pry over here and you know it's gonna come and not damage anything. You can see the can be finicky. So you wanna get them out of here without breaking. Okay. And right there should be good to go. Grab it back here, it is tight in here. And we'll get these up and out of the way. See the harness is very, very tight in here. There we go. And you can just kind of put that off to the side like that. That's probably the hardest part of the job right there. It really is because you just want to be very careful with it and it gets stuck very easily. After all that, you want to put some compressed air in here again. And then you're going to remove your 8 millimeter hold down bolt for the coil. Get up and out of the way so you don't lose it down the cylinder. And then I'll once again. Now these coils also can get stuck in here. Um, so what you want to do is there's a bunch of ribs over here. Just kind of get underneath them and give it a light pry, maybe a wiggle, maybe twist it in there, and they'll help get them out of there. Okay. Get the coil out, off to the side. We have access to our spark plug down in there. Again. Some compressed air. All right. And then for the front ones, I like to use the long extension on the 5 8 spark plug socket. And then we're simply going to loosen them. What you want to do with these, taking them off and going back on, is keep them centered. See how we're centered in there? As best you can. You don't want to side load the... Um, spark plug at all, even with a swivel like this. It's not good. Now you hear that right there? That's a dry spark plug in the threads in there. Um, put in from the factory with no anti-seize in the threads. With the special plating on the, on the plugs. Now do you see why I still recommend putting a little bit of anti-seize on there? They're going to come out real dry like this. You don't want to have problems. So that's why I put a little bit on there still nowadays. So at this point, once it's loose, it's probably best to just twist it out by hand. You kind of feel it and get it up and out of there. And there it is. Pretty nasty, a little rusty, stuff like that. And then once again with the compressed air, I go down into the cylinder, put pressure in there, and it blows everything out that's in the cylinder potentially, and everything on the threads. Yeah, like that. All right, we're good to go. And then we're gonna take our new spark plug, we're gonna place it into the big magnetic socket, and it'll hold it in place while we're putting it down into the cylinder. Now, if I didn't mention it already, the, sp the, the spark plug gap on here is right around 51 thousandths. And they are set from the factory, but they can shift or get damaged in transit. So you always want to check them uh, to make sure, but generally they are good to go. I'll go ahead and put it down in here. And this part right here is key. Again, make sure you don't side load it. You want to keep it in the center as, soon as, 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 as much as possible. But this point right here, you want to hand thread it into the cylinder head. You'll feel it'll be nice and smooth going back into there. No binding, no weirdness, and that's just gonna get a dead stop like you feel right there. At that point, you can use your ratchet to tighten it up. I'll put the torque spec down below. I don't use torque specs on these. I do them all by hand. There's a good feel. I have a good feel over the years. The key again here, don't side load it. I cannot stress it enough, especially when you're tightening it. Don't side load it. You will ruin the new spark plugs. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a regular standard length 3H ratchet like this, and we're going to get it tight. Okay, it's dead stop. 
Then we're going to come up on it, choke up on it a little bit so we lose our leverage, and then we're going to finish tightening it by hand. This will make sure we don't over tighten it. I think the torque spec on these is like 127 inch pounds. So if you're choking up on it like this and you're turning it, believe me, you're at that spec, if not a little bit over, and you're not going to have any problems. Going back together, I put a little bit of dielectric grease on the boot like that right there. Don't worry about the excess. It will get smeared around inside the boot on there and the spring. It's no problem at all. And of course, coat the porcelain on the spark plug itself. So we'll go, what we'll do is we'll go down in here, kind of wiggle as you go down in, and then we'll line up our hole. And again, you want to thread this by hand. And we'll get this secured into place. Just snug it by hand with a quarter inch ratchet. You'll be good to go. Now this part again is critical. We're gonna take our electrical harness over here and we're gonna get it in there nice and straight the best you can. There we go. And then we're gonna push it in until it clicks. You wanna hear it click and lock in. It may be a little hard like this one. You want to feel it or hear it lock in. You heard it there? Now we're locked in. We're definitely locked in. Little tug. It's not going anywhere. And then we'll slide over the red locking tab. And that's it. It's pretty simple. The hardest part is the electrical connector, believe it or not, and getting it up and off there without damaging it so you can get to the coil and the spark plug underneath it. Now I'll repeat the same procedure on the next seven. They're all out in the open just like this one, and you'll be good to go for another 60 to 80,000 miles. Generally around 60,000 miles, you start to see these gaps get pretty big, uh, but they can go 80,000 no sweat before you really see any difference in MPGs and performance. That's about it. I'll see you guys next time.